Tomorrow is Rosh Hashanah Eve. The year will be 5,782. And around the world, rabbis are preparing for their most important sermons of the year. As the Jewish high holidays are celebrated amid COVID-19, for some people, the Rosh Hashanah sermon may be the only sermon they hear all year. The Zionist Rabbinic Coalition recently held a high holiday sermon webinar for several hundred rabbis grappling with the impact of the recent Gaza war and the increase in anti-Semitism in the U.S. and around the world. And we're now joined by Rabbi Stuart Weinblatt. He's the founder of the congregation B'nai Tzedek in Potomac, Maryland, and the founder of the Zionist Rabbinic Coalition. He joins us now from Maryland. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. It's the first time I've ever done a te television interview where they pronounced the name said it correctly, but the town incorrectly. It's Potomac, Maryland, but okay. thank you. <laughs> well, you can get everything right for the first time. Right. Um, what are some of the concerns that you heard from uh, rabbis across the U.S. towards uh, the Rosh Hashanah sermons? Well, I think, um, how, first of all, going into the second year of uh, 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 of the pandemic is is a very stressful time for many rabbis and as well as for for everyone. Um, I think we had anticipated and thought that we would uh, be able to return to normalcy, and that's not meant to be. Um, so uh, at any rate, you know, this is a time when we really think a tremendous amount about what are the words we want to say, what kind of a message do we want to deliver, um, and so this is very much uh, the kind of things that, that that rabbis are focusing on right now, as well as looking at the big picture um, and our connection after. After all, it is the birthday of the world. So what's our responsibility to the world? What's our responsibility to ourselves, to our people, and so on? And those are some of the kinds of things that we grapple with at a time like this. Are there any questions also that come up uh, with regards to, to science? Uh, I mean, you do uh, uh, say that it's the beginning of the world or the birth of the world. I think most of us know that the world was not created just 5,700 and uh, 82 years ago. Uh, what are some, what do you answer to that? I'm sure a lot of Americans are, are questioning the strange number. Sure, I think one of the points is that we always recognize that that's meant to be a metaphor. The world was started, the world had a beginning, and in the beginning, God. I think that's part of the message. So um, I don't think we get hung up on that. You know, Jews are not a literalist at, uh, in terms of our interpretation of the Torah. If that were the case, we wouldn't have a Talmud, we wouldn't have a Midrash, we wouldn't have rabbinic tradition, all of which is what really makes Judaism Judaism. So I don't think we get hung up in terms of, of that aspect. Um, I often speak with people about the, uh, uh, the fact that you can believe in both God and science. So I think uh, we really try to deal with larger issues. And speaking of science, Certainly, uh, uh, there may be rabbis who are concerned, uh, who will speak about concerns about our world. Uh, and that's part of the message also, that we've been given this gift, that we are the stewards of the world, and what are we gonna do with it? And what is our responsibility, especially in this time of tremendous climate change and all of the uh, terrible uh, uh, natural, nat natural disasters we've seen recently? So that might be on the agenda and on the minds of, of both uh, rabbis as well as members, um, congregants, because uh, it's a time really of introspection, of retrospection, and I also like to see it as a time of inspiration and connection as well. Was the war in Gaza in May a point of uh, uh, contemplation or uh, perhaps even crisis for some uh, American Jewry communities? Very much so. I think this was such a flashpoint. Um, in a very short period of time, the response was very, very intense on social media. I have many people who told me about the, uh, putting up maybe a pro-Israel posting in their uh, uh, Facebook page, and then just getting almost pounded and assaulted from all kinds of places. Um, so there may be even a, a you know, a, a campaign to try and and silence those kinds of voices, number one. Number two, which we supportive of Israel. Number two, we also have uh, uh, saw, saw the attacks uh, across the world and here in the United States, whether it was at a sushi restaurant in Los Angeles or in New York in the Diamond District or on the Upper East Side. <clears throat> so um, we see, I think one of the messages of what happened in, in, in this summer in Gaza is that unlike Las Vegas, what happens in Israel doesn't stay in Israel. What happens in the Middle East does have an impact on Jews around the world. And part of that message also then is um, of, of our responsibility uh, to be supportive of our fellow Jews and of what happens to the, our Jewish family in Israel. Okay, Rabbi uh, Stuart Weinblatt, uh, wish you a happy new year uh, and to your community as well. May we have a lot of good news uh, in the coming year. 
Thank you, and it, uh, Shana Tova to all of your listeners, and we hope this will be a time to strengthen those ties between the Jewish people wherever we are around the world and to our Jewish heritage. Thank you very much.